Grocery Kitty by Helen Hulk. Pictures by Harry Lees. Everyone in town knew the Sunset Grocery Store and Mr. Casey, the little man with a ring of fuzz on his head who owned the Sunset Grocery Store and waited on all the customers. And everyone in town knew the Sunset Grocery Cat who had been with Mr. Casey since his first day in business. She was a tiger strike beauty with a proud look, and a particularly proud look after she had scrubbed her kittens within an inch of their lives. Give her a box of Brillo, and I'll bet she'd scour them with that too, said Mr. Casey. Come to think of it, she does just as good a job as Brillo does when it comes to scouring. Come to think of it, she might as well be called Brillo. After that, everybody called Mr. Casey's cat Brillo. Mr. Casey was very proud of Brillo. He liked to talk about her while he was filling orders for his customers. You can't run a grocery store without a good grocery cat, he told them, and Brillo's the best in the business. She's a born mouser, sits outside the holes waiting for the mice. Surprises them, that's what she does. Surprises me too, knows her company manners and purrs up to the good customers. She knows the fuss budget's a mile away. Brillo always purred when she heard Mr. Casey talking this way. Of course she knew the good customers always had children with them, and big shopping bags that would hold a lot of groceries. They laughed when Brillo licked the sawdust off their shoes, and they joked with Mr. Casey. But the fussy ones, they held their purses tight in their hands. They argued about the prices, and they pinched the peaches and the melons, and their mouths stayed in a tight line. They swished their skirts away from Brillo. Poor Mr. Casey could never please them. Have you tried this, he would say, or have you tried that? Then he would line up the soups and the cereals all down the counter, but the fussy ones still couldn't make up their minds. Brillo tried to help Mr. Casey. She would arch her back and yawn. Then she would walk off and pretend to go to sleep in the corner. It was almost as if she was trying to tell Mr. Casey that he was wasting his time. She's right, too, said Mr. Casey. When Brillo walks away from a customer, I know I'll never make a sale there. Brillo was always pleased to hear Mr. Casey talk about her. It was very nice to know that Mr. Casey thought that she was a good grocery cat. But of course she was a good grocery cat. Her mother was a good grocery cat. And so had her grandmother and her sisters and brothers. And all of her very own kittens. Well, all that is except one, Brillo sighed. That one was Sudsy. It was because of Sudsy that Brillo sighed. One by one, Brillo had to say goodbye to her kittens and sent them off to be good grocery cats in other stores. Now she was training the last two, the two little ones called Big Sister and Sudsy. Big Sister was coming along fine, but Sudsy... Sudsy was different. He was Brillo's youngest kitten. He looked just like her, with his fierce tiger stripes and his round yellow eyes. But he wasn't a bit like her in any other way. He would rather make his bed in a big open box of soap flakes than in the nice warm box with the blanket that Mr. Casey had fixed back of the stove. He loved to jump on the counters. He liked nothing better than a good roll in the bin full of beans. Sudsy didn't even know how to begin to be a grocery cat, and he had never caught a mouse. Perhaps he's just naughty, Brillo thought. I'll try again. So at 7 o'clock, when Mr. Casey rang the cash register and counted his money into a big bag, and then when he turned out the lights and locked the doors and left everything in charge of Brillo, Brillo called, Sister, Sudsy, come out to the pickle barrel. The pickle barrel was as round as a tree trunk and very high. Brillo jumped up and lightly balanced on the edge. Come along, she said. Big Sister waited a minute, a very tiny minute. Then she jumped too. She balanced quite nicely on the edge of the barrel, swaying gently back and forth with her tail keeping time. Do I have to do that? said Sudsy, looking up from the nut he was rolling across the floor. Why do I have to? It's a good grocery store lesson, Brillo called down to him. Jump up, Sudsy. You can do it. Big Sister will lead the way, and you must follow her all around the edge of the pickle barrel. This is the first step in learning how to go along crowded shelves. What if I fall in, Sudsy said, not even making a move to get off the floor. You would spoil the pickles, said Brillo. And besides, you'd get wet and salty in the pickle water. I think I'll stay down here, declared Sudsy firmly. Now, now, Sudsy, said Brillo. Behave yourself and jump before I count to ten. All the time Brillo was counting, Big Sister bounced on the edge of the barrel like a good little kitten while Sudsy stalked back and forth on the floor below. Ten, said Brillo, and Sudsy jumped. He jumped so high and so hard that his front feet went over the edge of the barrel, and only his hind feet caught. There he was, divided in half, his head hanging down, ready to dive into the pickles any minute, until Brillo helped him. She pulled him up just in time. 
Now you see what will happen if you lose your balance, she said sternly. I don't like it, declared Sudsy. Ready, sister, said Burlo. Now then, cross one leg in front of the other, like me, and start walking. Sister took a wobbly step, then another one. In a minute, she was almost dancing her way around, crisscrossing her feet daintingly, as Burlo told her to do. But not Sudsy. He put one brave foot forward, and his other foot slid over the side. Burlo pulled him up and gave him a gentle slap with her paw. He tried again. This time, he managed to cross his front paws nicely, but his hind legs slipped. Oh, Sudsy, cried Burlo in despair. You'll never make a good grocery cat. And then a wonderful thing happened. Sudsy saw a mouse. The only reason Sister and Burlo did not see the mouse was because they were worried about Sudsy. Sudsy made a flying leap from the pickle barrel. He crossed the room at a run, exactly the wrong thing to do, and not the way Burlo had taught him to go mouse catching. Stay here, Sister, cried Burlo. Let Sudsy try. Now, if Sister and Burlo had been trying to catch the mouse, they would have walked on the velvety pads of their feet or pulled themselves along their soft furry bodies. They would have been then as quiet as the silence in the empty grocery store, as wary as tigers of the jungle. Once they had cornered the mouse, they would have taken their time, standing proud and motionless, with only a nervous flick at the end of the tail to show they were ready to pounce. Sudsy forgot all this. All Sudsy knew was that he must get to the hole in the wall before the mouse got to it. His flying leap through the air had landed him halfway across the room. The next pounce brought him close enough to catch the tail of the mouse, but it was a very slippery tail. It slipped right through Sudsy's paws, and the mouse slipped right through the hole in the wall. Well, said Brillo, I hope you're ashamed of yourself. You didn't even see the mouse, said Sudsy. Oh dear, said Brillo, whatever shall I do with you? Go to bed, Sudsy, in the box where you belong and not in the soap flakes. The next day it rained, and Sudsy ran out in the yard and got covered with mud. It took his mother half a day to get him clean again. The day after that, Sudsy did something worse. Whenever Mr. Casey rattled the lid of the frozen food icebox, it meant dinner time for Brillo and the kittens. Inside the icebox was their special box of fish, and how they looked forward to the time when they could have it. Mr. Casey would wait until no one was in the store. Then he rattled the lid and the cats came running pell-mell. Next, he opened the box of fish and tossed one, two, three pieces on the floor. Brillo always waited while Big Sister and Sudsy got theirs. Then she stepped up to Mr. Casey and rubbed her head against his leg to say thank you. After that, she took the piece of fish that was hers. But this time, something different happened. When Mr. Casey opened the frozen food box, before he even had a chance to reach in for the box of fish, Sudsy jumped straight up into the freezer. He knew he should never climb on the counter, not even a shelf unless there was a mouse there. He knew he should never go into the vegetable bin. And most of all, he knew he should never, never, never get into the frozen food box. Just the same, Sudsy jumped. It was cold. It was so cold his paws stuck to the boxes of frozen fruits. He pulled them away painfully one at a time. Then he got his tail stuck to the side of the wall. He breathed cold air and he smelled cold air. He could almost taste the cold air. And he couldn't see fish anywhere around. Wow! cried Sudsy. Jiminy jumpers! cried Mr. Casey. Pew! said Big Sister. Grrr! growled Brillo. Never, said Mr. Casey. Never would I have believed that a kitten of Brillo's would do something like that. He reached down and picked Sudsy out of the icebox. Then he threw down two pieces of fish instead of the usual three. Cold and sorry and very, very hungry. That was Sudsy as he sat and watched Brillo and Big Sister eat their fish. Big Sister looked at him with sad eyes, but Brillo did not even so much as notice him. Late that night, when the moonlight came through the windows and the store was shadowy and scary, Sudsy crept up to Brillo and said, I'm sorry. Brillo sighed again, but after all, Sudsy was her youngest kitten, so she gave him a soft pat. Maybe he would do better after a while. Maybe he would learn. The day will come, said Brillo, when you'll really learn to catch a mouse. But Sudsy didn't want to learn. Sudsy wanted to play. Because Sudsy always did exactly what he wanted to do, he began to think up all sorts of wonderful games that Big Sister and Brillo would never think of playing. He discovered the game with the flower first. One day, Sudsy was sharpening his sharp little claws on a bag of flour. He wasn't supposed to do this, but he forgot. Suddenly, he was surprised to see a little white river of flour running out of the hole that his claws had made. Soon, there was a big white hill on the floor. Sudsy jumped in the big white hill and got his feet covered with white. Then he discovered the next part of the game. 
and this part was the most fun of all. Wherever he put his feet down on Mr. Casey's clean floor, they left four perfect little white marks. Round and around went Sudsy, leaving little white cat feet wherever he went. When Burlo saw the white tracks, she could not believe her eyes. It did not take her very long to trace them back to the flower bag, and it did not take her much longer to follow the tracks and find Sudsy. How could you do it? Burlo sighed. Why did you do it? It was a good game, said Sudsy. It was fun. Burlo knew that she must think up a lesson that would teach Sudsy never to put his claws into a flower bag again. She stalked off, thinking hard. In a minute, she knew what Sudsy's lesson must be. Sudsy, she said, you've got work to do. Sudsy looked up from a sunbeam he was watching as it crossed the floor. Must I do it now? he asked. Can't I do it later? No, said Burlo. You have to do it now. I'll show you how. And Brillo lay down and rolled and rolled on the floor, dusting up the white paw marks. Then she turned to Sudsy. Now you do it, she said. Get it all up. And when you got the flower up, then lick up what's left. Oh, Brillo, Sudsy moaned. That will take hours. Yes, Brillo agreed. So you had better get started. Sudsy rolled and shook and licked and lapped. His neck ached. His tongue ached. His legs ached. His nose got full of flour. His whiskers got sticky, and when he was all finished with the cleaning and dusting job, he knew that never, never, never would he play the game with the flower again. For a day or two after the game with the flower, Sudsy was very good. Then he decided it was time to have fun again. He made up his mind to play a game in the front window of Mr. Casey's store. It was a very beautiful front window. It had taken Mr. Casey a whole evening to trim it. There were 100 cans of salmon in it, arranged in a big pyramid. At first, Sudsy peeked into the mysterious holes between the cans, but that wasn't very exciting. Then he decided that the big pyramid was nothing more than a ladder, which would be fun to climb. From the top of the cans, the view was fine through the store window. A little yellow butterfly was fluttering outside the glass. Sudsy began to climb down after it. Then he decided to jump straight from where he was. But his sudden flying leap brought the whole pyramid of cans tumbling down in a terrible bang. Bang, 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 bang! The cans flew all over. Some of them bounced. Some of them rolled. Some of them just missed Sudsy. Ow! cried Sudsy. Thunderation! shouted Mr. Casey. Look, look, there's a little kitten underneath, called one of the customers. Brillo, who had come flying when she heard Sudsy yell, did not know what to do. Mr. Casey pulled Sudsy out of the cans, looked him over carefully, then dropped him on the floor. Nothing broken, he sighed, and Sudsy's all right, but look at this mess! Brillo just gave a sad look at Sudsy, and one sorry look at Mr. Casey, and turned away. She did not even say to Sudsy, how could you? Sudsy crept back to the room behind the store where he was supposed to be when he was not busy. Big Sister had not even left to see what was happening. Big Sister always did what she was supposed to do. But she had heard the dreadful noise. Oh, Sudsy, she said sorrowfully, what have you done now? Sudsy did not even try to explain. For the first time in his life, he felt a little ashamed of himself. That awful mess in the front window was all his fault. All those salmon cans rolling every which way. Poor Mr. Casey would have to pick up each one, and he would have to build the beautiful pyramid all over again. Sudsy sat there for a long time, feeling ashamed and wondering when Burlo was coming to scold him. But Burlo did not come. Finally, Sudsy went to look for her. He found her sitting, looking sadly off into space. I'm sorry, said Sudsy. I'm so sorry, Burlo. I promise I won't think about new games anymore. I promise I will begin to think about how to catch a mouse. Well, Brillo said to herself as she watched Sudsy bound off to tell Big Sister what he was going to think about. Maybe he had such a good scare, he really will begin to think about a mouse. Maybe the day will come. The day did come. Mr. Casey's sister, Molly, came running into the store. Miss Molly owned a bakery. Her peach pies were the best in town. Miss Molly was fat and jolly. But today she looked very upset. A mouse I've got. A real mouse in my bakery. You must give me one of Brillo's kittens, she said to Mr. Casey. Take your choice, said Mr. Casey. There are only two left. Miss Molly looked at Sudsy. Then she looked at Big Sister. Then she looked at Sudsy again. Big Sister behaved the way Brillo had taught her to behave on big occasions. She was quiet. She swished her beautiful tail in a friendly fashion. But she did not swish it too often or too hard. 
She gave one small musical purr, and she blinked her big eyes at Miss Molly. Not Sudsy. Sudsy wiggled all over, and his tail danced with excitement. He purred like an oversized motor, and in a final burst of joy, he rolled over and over and over on the floor. The little one is the cutest, said Miss Molly, but do you think he would keep his mind on mice? Well, said Mr. Casey, to tell you the truth, Molly, that little one doesn't seem like one of Brillo's kittens at all. I think perhaps you'd better take the other one. So Big Sister went off with Miss Molly, and both of them looked very pleased. Brillo watched Sudsy anxiously, but Sudsy merely flicked his tail and pretended he did not mind. That night, Brillo said to Sudsy, Now there are only two of us. We will have fun, said Sudsy. Brillo sighed. Fun, fun. That's all you think of, she said seriously. Sudsy, I'm not a young cat as I once was. I shouldn't have to worry so much about you. What's more, someday I may have to leave you. Mr. Casey is talking about opening another store out in the suburbs, and of course he will want me there to help him get things running smoothly. If I must go away and leave you, I want you to remember one thing, Brillo went on. Never forget that you come from a long line of good grocery cats. Your great-great-grandmother used to say that anybody who belonged to her was born with eyes that could see a mouse through the walls and with ears that could hear the first mouse whisper. Remember that, Sudsy. Someday you may have to take my place in Mr. Casey's Sunset Grocery Store. Sudsy sat very still. Brillo sounded worried. Well, there was just one thing to do. He must catch a mouse. Then Brillo would be happy. But in spite of Sudsy's good plans, the days went by and still he hadn't caught a mouse. More than ever, Brillo wondered if he ever would. Then one night, there was a faint sound behind the cracker boxes. Brillo was delighted when she saw Sudsy look up. It's a mouse whisper, cried Sudsy. I heard it. But of course, the moment he spoke, he scared the mouse away. Another night they saw a mouse. It was an old wise mouse. It wasn't afraid to come out of its hole because it knew it could get back in time. Sudsy looked at Brillo. Brillo nodded. Brillo knew that the old mouse would get away, but she also knew that Sudsy might learn something from the experience. This time, just as Brillo had taught him, Sudsy eased his way along the floor without making a sound. The old mouse sat and waited for him. Sudsy thrust out a paw, but the old mouse moved like a streak of lightning away from it. Sudsy sat still and for a minute wasn't quite sure what to do next. Then he rushed at the mouse, but once more the mouse got away. Sudsy didn't mind, though, for this was a new game a game of tag, and he enjoyed it so much he forgot everything that Brillo had so carefully taught him. He forgot he was supposed to catch the mouse. After a while, the old mouse got tired of Sudsy and playing tag, and before Sudsy knew it, the old mouse whisked away into his hole. You see, said Brillo sadly, you just don't know how to catch a mouse. What should I have done, said Sudsy. You should play with a mouse after you've got him cornered, said Brillo, but not before. Oh, said Sudsy, and for the first time he began to wish he could catch a mouse all by himself. Brillo left the Sunset Grocery Store much sooner than she had planned. Mr. Casey's brother was the reason. Mr. Casey's brother bought a market, a big shiny market, a brand new market. But, would you ever believe it, groaned Mr. Casey's brother, it's already got mice. What you need is a real mouser, said Mr. Casey, and he looked thoughtfully at Brillo. I tell you what, he said, Brillo's got the store practically mouse-free, and Sudsy probably can carry on for a while. You may borrow Brillo. Brillo went off with Mr. Casey's brother that very day, but she was not happy at all. Indeed, Brillo went off with her heart aching. Sudsy looked so little and so young, and so unlike a proper grocery kitty. He looked as if he belonged in a pretty field of flowers, or in a gay parlor rug, or in a bright-colored basket of wool. Don't worry, says he whispered to Brillo when it was time to say goodbye. But to tell the truth, he was more than a little worried himself. That night, when Mr. Casey locked up the store, he stood at the door and said, It doesn't seem right to leave a little kitten alone in this big, dark, empty store. Sudsy gave a faint meow. He agreed with Mr. Casey. It didn't seem right to leave him there all alone. But Mr. Casey shut the front door and locked it, and went off in the night. And there was Sudsy, in complete charge of things. Sudsy tried to go to sleep. Then he remembered how Brillo had told him that from now on, he must sleep in catnaps all day and stay awake all night. His eyes felt heavy. His head rolled down on his shoulder. He missed Brillo. He was almost asleep when he heard the mouse whisper. At first he thought he would pretend to stay asleep. Maybe if he'd keep quiet, it would go away. Nobody would ever know the mouse had been there. 
Nobody would ever know that Sudsy had not caught it. Except Brillo. Brillo knew everything. Sudsy loved Brillo, and now he did not want to disappoint her. For Brillo would be coming back soon, and Brillo would be sure to ask Sudsy if any mice had been there while she was away. So thinking very hard about Brillo, and wishing very much that she was there, Sudsy kept his eyes and his ears wide open. Sudsy's mouse hunt that night was the most exciting thing that had ever happened to him. He remembered it for years and years. It began at the foot of a big tall ladder. Sudsy had never climbed all the way to the top of that ladder before, but tonight he did. First he pricked up his ears and tried to locate the mouse whisper. He hardly breathed. After a little while, he saw that the mouse was way up above him. On a shelf at the top of the tall ladder, Mr. Casey climbed when he had to get things from the top shelves. The mouse was nibbling at a box of Quaker Oats. Sudsy edged up the ladder step by step, quieter than any mouse could be. Finally, he got to the top of the ladder. Then, he pounced at the surprised mouse, but the mouse was quicker than Sudsy was. Off he sprang along the crowded shelves, with Sudsy nipping a tuck after him. Along the shelves, the mouse hunt went. Down went a box of cornflakes. Bing went the ketchup bottle. Bing, 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 bing went all four bars of soap. Gurgle, gurgle, crash went a bottle of syrup. Pfft, went a bottle of soda water. Oh dear, thought Sudsy, everything is falling down. But he knew he must keep up the chase. On and on the mouse went. Won't it ever get tired, Sudsy wondered. Won't it ever slow up? He knew he must keep on chasing it until he got it in a corner where it couldn't get away. Then maybe he could play with it. But he didn't feel very much like playing with it now. By this time, Sudsy really knew what a serious business hunting a mouse could be. On and on and on he went, streaking flour and rice and soap flakes and trailing sawdust over the counters, never losing sight of the mouse for an instant. But oh dear, would he never catch up with it? At last, he chased the mouse right up against the cash register. Now then, with a delicate plunge, Sudsy caught it. He felt very pleased. He shivered all over with happiness. If only Brillo was here, if only Mr. Casey could see him. And then, suddenly, Sudsy realized that Mr. Casey would be seeing something else when he came to the store in the morning. A mess. Sorrowfully, Sudsy looked around him. He looked at all the boxes that had tumbled down. He looked at all the bottles of soda and bluing and syrup and ammonia lying on their sides, broken and spilling all over the floor. He looked at a big heap of soap flakes covered with ketchup. It looked rather like an ice cream sundae for a giant. Suddenly, Sudsy thought of how Brillo had taught him never, never, never to lunge and plunge in the store and mess things up. He remembered the awful day when he had played the game in front of the window and knocked down all the salmon cans. Mr. Casey would think he had been playing games again, and Mr. Casey would be sad. Brillo might understand that the mess was all because of the mouse, but Mr. Casey wouldn't understand, for Brillo never knocked anything down when she caught a mouse, and Mr. Casey wouldn't be able to see why things had to be knocked down when Sudsy caught one. There was only one thing to do. He must run away. Run away because, even if he had caught a mouse, he had made a terrible mess doing it. Sorrowfully, Sudsy jumped off the counter and picked his way across the sticky floor to the back room. Here, there was a special window that swung out if it were pushed. Sudsy pushed and pushed. In a minute, he was out in the cold black night. Sudsy had never been out alone in the night before, and at first he ran fearfully, looking this way and that way. But after a while, he began to find this strange new world very exciting. He turned down an alleyway and ran plunk into a big silver can. It was slippery, but Sudsy managed to climb up on top. When he got up on top, he felt something slide. The whole top of the can was coming off. Sudsy balanced on the side and heard it fall with a big crash. Just then, he smelled the nicest smell of fish. Sudsy poked his nose into the can to see if there was fish there. But before he could be sure, he heard the pounding of soft cat feet coming down the alley. Lots of cat feet. All of a sudden, two of the biggest and ugliest cats he had ever seen jumped up and pushed him off the can. They dived down and pulled out the fish. But when Sudsy started to jump up again for his share, they scratched him with their claws and growled at him. Sudsy ran away as fast as he could go. Down the alley he went, lickety-split, but the two big cats followed after him. Soon Sudsy was so tired he knew he could not run another step. What could he do now to get away from those big ugly cats? Right in front of him was a tree. It was a very big tree. Sudsy had never climbed a tree in his life, but he had climbed a ladder. Quickly, he took a huge jump and fastened his claws into the bark. Then up, 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 and up, like a flash, he climbed, all the way to the big bare branches. 
There he flattened himself against the trunk of the tree so the two big cats would not see him. Peeking down through the branches, he saw the two big cats start up toward him. So as he trembled from his head to his tail, they came closer and closer, spitting and growling. They would get him for sure. Just then a fire engine raced down the street, its sirens screaming, and the two big cats turned, jumped off the tree, and ran away. So as he stopped trembling and peered down through the branches, would they come back, those two big cats? He waited fearfully, but they did not return. Says he stayed up in the tree all night long. He discovered that sitting high above the ground was a good place to think, and he had plenty of time to think, and plenty of time to sleep. But for the first time in his life, he couldn't sleep at all. He was frightened and cold and sad and very, very hungry, and he was lonely. He was thinking about his nice warm box in the back of Mr. Casey's Sunset Grocery Store. When morning came, Sudsy looked down at the ground and wondered how he could ever get there. It was such a long way down, but he knew he couldn't stay in the tree forever. So slipping and sliding and mauling, he finally worked his way down. But he had made so much noise mauling that lots of bright eyes were watching him. And just as he got to the bottom of the tree, three dogs came bounding over the fence toward him. There was a big dog, a middle-sized dog, and a little dog. As soon as the little dog made for him, Sudsy knew that he must fight for his life. He wished he could remember more of the things Sabrilla had taught him about how to fight. For if the other dogs jumped on him too, he wouldn't have a chance. But they didn't. The big dog walked off board, and the middle-sized dog just sat and watched. Oh, if only Brilla were here to help me, Sudsy thought in despair. But Brilla wasn't there. There was nothing for him to do than to fight it out by himself. Just then, the little dog backed up to get a good spring at Sudsy. And suddenly... Suzzy knew the best thing to do. He did it. He ran away fast, leaving the little dog far behind. When at last Suzzy stopped to catch his breath, there was only one thing he wanted in the whole world. He wanted to be a grocery cat. He wanted to be in charge of things in Mr. Casey's Sunset Grocery Store. He wanted to belong to Mr. Casey and Mr. Casey's store for always and be safe in the big back room waiting for Brillo to come back. Yes, he wanted to be there where fish would always be ready for him in a soft bed and nice people to pet it, and interesting work to do like catching mice. Even if Mr. Casey scolded him for knocking over the boxes and bottles and cases and jars, he would not mind. I'm going back, says he decided, right now. But going back wasn't so easy. How could he find his way to Mr. Casey's sunset grocery store when he did not even know where he was? He had been up an alley, up a tree, in a yard with a fence around it, and now he was in an empty lot. He was so tired he wanted more than ever to cuddle up and go to sleep. But on and on he went, up and down and around and around, and in and out of places looking for his home. Late that afternoon, just when it was beginning to get dark, Sussy saw the bright familiar lights of Mr. Casey's Sunset Grocery Store. The door was open. Sussy ran through it full speed, his eyes blinking, his tail waving. He was covered with mud, and his fur was sticking up in wisps. Just inside the door, he stopped and looked up at Mr. Casey, who was standing there beside one of the good customers. Meow, said Sudsy. And then suddenly, everything was all right. Everything was wonderful. For Mr. Casey cried to the good customers, Look, look at him. What did I tell you? A born mouser, just like his mother. First night alone in the store, and that little kitten went right to work. He leaned down to pat Sudsy. I came in this morning and found the biggest mouse I've ever seen, Mr. Casey went on, stretched out right next to the cash register. Brillo will be proud of this kitten, all right. Sudsy, his name is. I don't mind how much of a mess he made. Sudsy got rid of the mouse. And when he gets a little older, maybe he won't knock things down when he's on a mouse hunt. Sudsy liked the nice things that Mr. Casey was saying. He liked being petted and spoken to in a soft, kind voice. And most important of all, he was happy because Mr. Casey turned and walked toward the frozen food icebox. Sudsy purred, but the biggest surprise and most wonderful thing of all happened just as Mr. Casey was opening the lid of the freezer. Out of the back room came Brillo, back from Mr. Casey's brother's market for a little visit. Well, Brillo, Mr. Casey called to her, what do you think of your kitten now? Brillo purred and began cleaning Sudsy's tangled fur. Sudsy could tell, and so could Mr. Casey, that Brillo was very proud indeed of her good little grocery kitty. A piece of fish sailed through the air. Sudsy pounced on it. It was good. Life was wonderful. He had caught a mouse. Mr. Casey was pleased, and Brillo was pleased. Sudsy was a real grocery kitty now. No doubt about it.